Hello, friends. Welcome. Welcome to this presentation from Rising Power. I'm your friend, your host, Roy. And today we are discussing series one, where we are talking about real numbers. Friends, this is episode number four. And today's topic is finding out HCF using Euclid's division lemma. So, friends, let's get started. Now, what is HCF? HCF is also known as highest common factor. So HCF of any two given positive integers, say a and b, is equal to largest positive integer that divides both the integers a and b. So let's understand this uh, in the context of two numbers. Let's say uh, we have, um, let's say we have 10 and we have 18. If I have to find out the HCF of 10 and 18, I'm looking for such a number which is uh, the largest number that divides both 10 and 18. So how do we find out? Friends, we have seen this in our earlier classes. So what we do is we start out by finding out all the factors of each of these numbers. So for 10, we can write this as 2 multiplied by 5, right? So these are the two prime factors. Similarly, for 18, we can write 18 as 2 times 9, and we can break 9 as 3 times 3. So the 10, the number 10 can be written as, so I can write, let's write it here. So 10 is equal to 2 times 5, 2 times 5, and 18 is equal to 2 multiply by 3 and 3. So 2 multiply by 3, multiply by 3. So if I look at 10 and 18, it is the number 2, which is the common factor for between 10 and 18, the number 2 is the common factor. So the highest common factor or HCF of 10 and 18 is 2. So we, uh, we write this as HCF and sometimes we write it within the bracket, we put the two numbers 10 and 18 is equal to the number 2. Now let's take one more example. Say we want to find out the HCF of, let's say, um, how about we take the number 60 and 32. Trying to pick a little bit bigger number. Now 60 I can write this as 2 times 30 is 60. For 30 I can write this as 2 times 15 and 15 I can write this as 3 times 5, right? So the factors for 60 is 2 times 2, 2 times 3 and 5. So 60 can be written as, so 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So this is 60. Similarly, for 32, I can write this as 4 times 8. 4 can be written as 2 times 2. And 8 can be written as 2 times 4. And the 4 can be bre broken down into 2 times 2. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 twos here. So for 32, I can write 32 as 2 times 2 times 2. There are 5 twos here times 2. So now if I were to look at the common factors for 30, 60 and 32, I see, I see 2 is a common factor. Then I see there is one more 2 which is common factor. Now after this I have 3 and 5 and here I have 2, 2 and 2. So it means the largest common factor for both 60 and 32 is 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. So I say that HCF of the number 60 and the number 32 is 2 times 2, which is equal to number 4. So friends, this is all what we have already 
learned in our earlier classes. Now let's find out how Euclid's division lemma can help us find HCFs of two given numbers. So we start with a quick recap of what is really Euclid's division lemma. We saw in the last video that Euclid's division lemma states, given two positive integers a and b, there exists unique integers q and r satisfying the equation a equals to b times q plus r, where the value of r is greater than or equal to 0 but less than b. And we saw in the last video that this is nothing but really the, the long division process written in a form of an expression. Right? So now, how do we apply the Euclid's division lemma and find out the HCF? So let's 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 dig deep into it. So before we do that, let's I think uh, it'll probably help. So if we were to uh, take two numbers, let's say a and b, let's say uh, let's say a is equal to 18 and b is equal to 10. So what Euclid's division lemma is saying is if you were to divide a by b, now let's do it here. So a is 18 and we have 10, b is 10. So 10 ones are 10 and 18 minus 10 is 8. So what Euclid's division lemma is saying is I can write 18 as equal to 10 multiply by quotient 1 plus remainder 8. So if you map the division lemma which is a equal to b multiply by q plus r, so you can clearly see that this is the quotient and this is the remainder. So for any given integer a and b, I have a unique quotient and I have a unique remainder. In order for me to find the q and the r, I have to actually do the division to find out the values of q and r. Now let's find out how we can actually find out HCFs. So if I were to find out HCF of two positive integers a and b, where a is greater than b, so the first step is we apply Euclid's division lemma or division algorithm to A and B. It means first we apply the division algorithm and then we find out Q and R. Q and R such that A equals to B times Q or Q times B plus R. After we do this, then we are going to evaluate is R which is remainder equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, then B is the HCF of A and B. If B is not equal to 0, then, then we apply Euclid's algorithm now to B and R. So this is interesting and very important to understand. That means if the remainder at the end of first step is not equal to 0, we keep doing Euclid's division algorithm, but the value of A and B changes. B actually becomes A and the remainder becomes B. We keep doing this until we find out, we continue this process until R, the remainder becomes 0. At that point, the divisor, whatever we have the divisor, is the required HCF of A and B. So what it means is, friends, if I were to write this here, um, so in our example, let's start with 18 and 10. Right. So when we do the first time, when we do uh, the division lemma, so what we have is we divide 10, we divide 18 by 10, right? So 10 ones are 10. And if I subtract 10 from 18, I get 8. Now this is my first step. So at the end of first step, what I have found out, I have found out my A equals to b times my quotient at this point is 1, right, plus r is my remainder. My remainder is not 0. So if I look at step 2, my remainder is not 0. So I have to keep doing this, uh, you know, again. I have to continue the step again. But this time, my a is not 
18. My A is now 10. So my A becomes 10. And my B, the smaller number now, is the remainder 8. So if I were to continue the division lemma on these two numbers, that means I have to divide 10 by 8. So if I were to continue this, so if I take the number 10, and I do 8, so 8, 1's are 8, and now I have got 2 as my remainder. Now again, this is not equal to 0. At this point, my A becomes 8, and my B is the current remainder, which is 2. So now I continue the process. So I divide 8 by 2. So uh, let's just do it here. So if I were to divide 8 by 2, because 2 is my last remainder, I realize that 2 fours are 8, and at this point, my remainder indeed becomes 0. So my last divisor is the number 2. So what Euclid is saying is if you follow these steps, the last divisor, when my remainder becomes 0, the divisor at that time is the required HCF of both A and B, which were our original two numbers. So for the numbers 10 and 18, their HCF is the number 2, which is exactly what we saw from our prior example when we were just trying to find out HCFs of 10 and 18. So friends, I think before we wrap up, let's do one final example. And what we are going to do is we are going to apply the Euclid's division lemma and find out the HCF for 60 and 32. So let's do that. So this is our A and this is our B. So this is A and this is B. So we are going to actually divide. We are going to divide 60 by 32. So let's write here 60 and 32. Now, <clears throat> if I do 32, 2 za, it will be 32 times 2 will be actually 64, right? But I have 60, so I have to go 32 1s are 32. And so here I have got 10, so 1 carry over 10 minus 2 is 8. I've got 5 minus 3 is 2. So my remainder is not 0. So this becomes my new B and this becomes my A. So instead of doing a separate starting the division process again, what I do, I'll pretend that I can do a division like this and I'll just put the 32 in here. Because remember now, my A is 32. So I have to divide 32 by this. So 28 ones are 28 and then subtract. So 32 minus 28 is 4. My remainder is again not 0. But at this point, my A becomes 28 and my B is 4. So I'm going to do the division like this. So I'll put 28 here. Now 4 7s are 28. So at this point, my remainder actually becomes 0. So, and what is my divisor? My divisor is 4. So now, friends, so the HCF of these two numbers, 60 and 32, is 4. That is, HCF of, HCF of 60 and 32 is equal to the number 4. And friends, this is exactly what we saw when we did the HCF using the techniques, the finding out the prime factors and understanding the common factors earlier. So friends, in the next webisode, we are going to take a look at some other applications of Euclid's division lemma.